Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Discovery Church. We're glad, uh, for those of you who are watching via live stream, uh, once again, we're glad that you're able to connect with us through this time, and, and we're glad those of us who are outside are able to um, be here and also enjoy the nice airplanes that go over here every, every once in a while. Um, so thanks so much for coming and for being a part of our gathered worship time together as a church. Um, and we're going to um, start uh, with um, a song for the beauty of the earth, um, and after that we'll hear a call to worship. So let's sing together. who made this beautiful earth calls us into worship uh, with the words of Psalm 104. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. And as we continue in joy in the Lord for all that he's made, we also want to rejoice in the brothers and sisters that he's made who are here. Um, and for those of us watching via live stream, those that we're able to connect with through technology. So if you're watching, uh, you can send a text or an email. If you're here, you can greet one another um, with the peace of Jesus and give thanks to uh, the Lord for all the goodness he's poured out on us.
gather back together and worship our God of wonders. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle.
As we um, consider just all the good things that God has made, um, one of the uh, calls that we have as followers of Jesus is to live as uh, members of this creation, as uh, really the kings and queens over it. If you read Genesis 1, um, that's part of what humanity was designed for, was to be the, the benevolent rulers over all creation. And that means walking in wisdom following the Lord wherever he leads and um, doing as he does. And we know, obviously, that that's not the world that we live in right now um, and that we're facing kind of all the myriad consequences of our first parents' failure and of the ways in which we ourselves fall short of that design. And um, we get a a chance now um, to come into the presence of that very God who called us to such a high calling um, and who has actually given us in Jesus the grace to begin to do that calling like we should have done in the first place and like we were created to do. Um, So we were made for a purpose. And in the midst of all of our work weeks uh, and the ways that um, the world can sort of take attention away from um, what is truest, um, we can forget that high calling, that great purpose. And so one of the benefits of having a quiet minute is that we get to remind ourselves of that purpose. And we get to um, take stock of all the things that are um, coming at us in our heads and our hearts. And we get to um, give those to the Lord and to ask him to redirect our attention to the things that he's called us to do, um, to help us to live, uh, as the Bible talks about, uh, in wisdom. And in order to reflect on that a little bit more, we're going to have a quiet minute and we're going to hear a passage of scripture from uh, Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. 
but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. The psalmist gives us a picture of what it looks like to be wise. It looks like listening to the Lord and um, following his ways. It looks like meditating on his word. And um, what that does is that makes you like a flourishing tree. And um, this next song is one um, that I wrote um, because there's not uh, a whole lot of songs out there that talk about this. Um, and I, I thought it was important for us as we begin uh, a new series through the book of Proverbs, as we begin to wonder what it's like to be wise uh, in God's eyes, um, it might be good for us to put ourselves imaginatively into the perspective of this person that Psalm 1 talks about, the righteous person. Um, what does it look like to be that person? What is it like to um, to feel like that person and to love like that person loves? Um, so. That's what the song is about, and it takes a bunch of different scriptures, and um, specifically it takes Psalm 1 um, as a kind of guide for us to think about that and to um, sing that into our hearts. So um, since this is the first time that um, most of you are probably hearing this, uh, no pressure if you don't want to sing. Um, you can just listen. Um, you can sort of get a sense for what it sounds like, and as we continue to sing this, um, Lord willing, it's something that... Um, begins to seep into us and starts to characterize us. So um, feel free to uh, listen and to um, hear these words that we're going to sing.
adore your word for the capacity to listen and to obey and to follow and walk wisely. We trust that you are not stingy with your grace towards us in that respect or in any respect. That if we lack wisdom, we can ask. And so we're asking and we're knocking and we're seeking and we know that the door will be open to us if we do so. So, Lord, we ask that you would speak now um, through your word. Help us to listen to Pastor Paul and the words that he's prepared, um, and that you might speak through him by your spirit. Give him conviction of heart and clarity of thought so that what comes from his mouth might be the truth, and that we might receive that as truth. We pray also for the new elders and deacons and um, for the work that you're going to do in them and the work that you are doing in them now. We give you thanks for each of them, and we pray for their work, that you would strengthen them and give them the grace they need to do that. Once again, Lord, we turn to you for everything that we need because you are the good creator of all things and that you know your world best. We trust you for your wisdom. And we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And good morning. Good morning to those of you who are watching on live stream. Thanks, Evan, for writing that song and for uh, putting yourself out there like that. Uh, might be a scary thing, I would think, but uh, we bless God that uh, you're using gifts, passions God has given to you in this way. This morning, we have the opportunity to celebrate God's gift of leadership to the church. We thank him joyfully for those who have served well and for those who are continuing to serve and for those who are continuing on and for those who are beginning in these roles of elder and deacon. 
We pray that God will continue to bless you, lead you, and guide you. In the leaders of the church, we find one of God's great gifts to the church. As the Lord of the church, Jesus appoints leaders, and by his Holy Spirit, he equips leaders. And by his word, they grow as disciples. By Christ's humbleness, leaders serve out of selfless love. And in prayer, they grow in grace and mercy. And Jesus taught us the true meaning of leadership when he said, Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So today we are installing Jeff Gorder and Hugh Grote as elders, and Richard Garrett and Dan Ziegler as deacons. And so Jeff and Hugh and Richard and Dan, in order to express your acceptance of these offices of elder and deacon at Discovery Church, I invite you to join me up front here and to face the people of God, and uh, we will continue on. In order to express your acceptance of these offices before God and his people, I'm going to ask you some questions. Then I will ask you individually for your answers. Here they are, four of them. First, do you believe that in the call of this congregation that God himself is calling you to this office, be it elder or deacon? Second, do you believe that the Old and the New Testaments are the word of God the only unerring rule of faith and how to live our faith out. Third, do you agree with the foundational teaching of the church and reject all teaching and doctrine that contradicts them? And then fourth, do you promise to do the work of an elder and deacon faithfully in a way worthy of your calling and in mutual accountability to the leadership of the church? I'm going to begin at this end. Jeff Gorder, what is your answer? Hugh Grote, what is your answer? Richard Garrett, what is your answer? Dan Ziegler, what is your answer? So may God guide you by his word, equip you by his spirit, and bless you in your service to the praise and the glory of God. I invite you to join together to give a clap offering to God for his gift that he has given to us. Following the questions and the answers, there's also charges that go to elders and to deacons. And then, thirdly, to you, the people of God. Here they are. As deacons, I charge you, Richard and Dan, to serve by showing mercy to the church and to all people. Deacons received this task in the early church when the apostles designated special persons for the task of mercy. Speak words of Christ's encouragement. Spur the church on to good deeds and to rich fellowship. In word as well as in deed, demonstrate the care of the Lord himself to all people. Help provide for the church members opportunities to share Christ in word and deed, as well as seeking the Spirit's leading in schools, in vocations, in neighborhoods, and networks. Join with others and spur us on to keep hospitality and welcoming in the forefront of our relationships. And by leading the way of living out Jesus' love, deacon show that Christians live by the spirit of the kingdom, fervently desiring the shape of things to come. And as elders, I charge you, Hugh and Jeff, to be shepherds of God's flock, which he bought with his own blood. Be a role model to youth and give them words of encouragement. Encourage those who are feeling the effects of age, recovering from surgery or injury, those who are feeling 
sick and unwell. Support people in their sadness. Celebrate with them in their joys. Be wise counselors and support your pastor. Above all, be compassionate in how we say and what we do. And yet know that your words are to be words of instruction. Know the scriptures and pray continually. Jesus' ministry can be summarized with the words, follow me. Let us follow him so closely so that, believe it or not, we might be able to say to others, follow me as I follow Christ. And now as these men have been instructed and charged as elders and deacons, there is a charge to you, the congregation. And after I read the charge, if you so accept the charge, we respond by saying we do, God helping us. I charge you, the family of Jesus Christ, to receive them as Christ's gift to the church. Recognize in these people the Lord's provision for healthy congregational life. Hold them in honor. Take their counsel seriously. Respond to them with obedience and respect. Accept their help with thanksgiving. Sustain them in prayer. Encourage them with your support, especially when they feel the burden of their office. Acknowledge them as the Lord's servants among you. So do you, congregation, pledge to receive them as they have been charged. If so, we say together, we do, God helping us. It is part of our practice that after the or during the installation that we anoint with oil and offer a prayer. And at this time, uh, I would like to invite your families to come and to join you. You might need to just spread out just a tad bit. If your families would come and join you to stand beside you, stand behind you, place a hand upon you, and then we will uh, anoint you with oil and offer up a prayer. So, Father God, we bless you for your gifts to us. We thank you for raising up mighty people. And we pray, Lord, that as they serve, they will bring glory to you, strength to your church, and good to our neighbors. We pray that with Timothy that you will ignite the gifts that you've given to them, that they will find your spirit leading and guiding them, even in new ways, as they serve in these new ministry. We pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon their family, that you will protect them with the blood shield of Jesus, their families, their homes, be places of great joy and laughter. We acknowledge that these men are gifts from you to us, and we give you thanks and praise, and humbly we present them to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And everyone agreed and said, amen. Thank you.
as Evan mentioned, we are entering into a new series that's going to carry us through the summer, a series out of the book of Proverbs. I got the title for this series out of a movie, believe it or not. One of the movies I really enjoy is movie number three of Indiana Jones when he's there on adventure with his father and just so many dynamics, not only of, of Indy, but the dynamics between him and his father, I really enjoyed. If, if you saw that movie, do you remember there at the end where he is after uh, the Holy Grail and he's, he's in this place where there is a, a myriad of different cups and a knight who is there guarding watch and there's someone else with Indy and, and they're to try to choose and to pick which of these cups here are part of the Holy Grail. And, and, and the bad guy picks the cup that he thinks is the cup of a king, uh, gold adorned with jewels, and he takes it and drinks something and he dies because it's the wrong cup. And the knight says, he has chosen poorly. <laughs> so Indiana, it's now his turn. And he picks the cup of a carpenter, a cup carved out of wood. And he drinks from it, and the knight says, you have chosen wisely. And over the years, Renee and I have incorporated that into our everyday life where every once in a while we'll say, you have chosen wisely. And so we enter into the book of Proverbs where God tells us to choose wisely. Choose his way. Choose him. As we begin this venture, we begin in chapter 1. And we'll be reading and reflecting on those first 10 verses. So you can follow along uh, in maybe a Bible you brought or picked up or on your phone or a device or just listen as I read. So I invite you to join with me in standing as we hear these words from the book that we love. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. And instruction. Listen, my child, for your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching, for they are a garland of grace over your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My child, if sinful people entice you, do not give in to them. God's very word. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated. Let me toss out for you uh, the beginning of some proverbs that maybe you know, and you finish the line. You can do it out loud. You can do it just to the person who is beside you, or you can say it out loud for everyone to hear you if you are so bold. Here they are. Spare the rod and... Boy, you're good. When the going gets tough... What goes up? A fool and his money are soon parted. If you give him an inch, he'll... The grass is always greener. With friends like that... Last one. 
people who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Proverbs, someone said, are things that are easy to say and hard to forget. But maybe we should say proverbs are easy to say but hard to live. So we need some help. In the Bible, there are three books that are known as wisdom literature. Books that answer a set of life's questions, but from a different perspective. And yet each of the three books of wisdom looks at how to live life well in this world and how to be good at life. The book of Proverbs is about leading a good life in general. While the books Ecclesiastes and Job are looking at life through someone who has gone through the ringer. And these other two books, Ecclesiastes and Job, look at why there is so much difficulty or confusion in life. Proverbs has insights on our vocation, relationships, money, sex, integrity, family, and spirituality. This book sees things that most people don't see. And yet this book is more than just a bunch of wise sayings, right? This book presents to us a, a worldview, or another way to look at it, uh, a canvas of all of life. It forms the structure of us understanding why God created the world, who God is, how God operates, our relationship to God, and that's all painted on a canvas. And the first really nine to ten chapters of the book of Proverbs, look at this big canvas of life, of the world, and of God. It gives us a, a form and a structure in order to understand this world and God placing us in this world. And then when we get to the, saying, the sayings, we can say, I see where that saying goes. It goes here on the canvas, or it goes here, or it goes here. So it's not just a bunch of karma out there. It's really looking at the world and God and humanity and we, how we are to live and to live well, understanding these things of God. For wisdom is a very true force, a force in this world that guides how people are to live. It is just as real as wind and gravity, and we can't see either of those two things, nor can we see wisdom, but it is just as real as the wind. Wisdom is the knack of getting along well in life situations. Wisdom is the knack of getting along well in life's situations. It's understanding the big picture God has given to us and how our choices fit into that big canvas. So let's talk a little bit of an introduction this morning about wisdom and about Proverbs. In general, when people are making good and just decisions, they are tapping into wisdom. And when people are making bad choices, they are working against wisdom. And for the most part, when people are enjoying the goodness of life, it is the result that they have been making choices in the direction of God's wisdom, of God's word. It's like it says later on in chapter 1, for the waywardness of fools destroy them, but whoever listens to me, wisdom, will live safely and be at ease without fear of harm. Now that isn't always the case, is it? There are times when we look at the world and there are bad and wicked people who seem to be living the good life. And there are others who are generally good people. 
who are really struggling. And that's where the other two wisdom books come in, Ecclesiastes and Job. But the teaching of wisdom, generally, is that as we follow God's plan and God's design, and we make choices in accordance with it, God blesses us because God longs to bless us. It's not only knowing God's word, it's putting, us, putting that word into practice. An interesting thing about the Old Testament word wisdom, as we find in Proverbs and other places, its root word that talks about wisdom is also the same root word that talks about a skilled artist. An artist like on a canvas that can not only see the picture, but is able to paint the picture. Colors and shades, textures, light, dark. They not only know these things, they're able to put it into practice. So just as a skilled artist enjoys working and taking those things and putting them down, someone who is skilled in wisdom not only knows these things of God, but puts them into practice. The author of Proverbs is Solomon, and we'll keep coming back to him from time to time. For the sake of a shorter introduction, he was the son of King David, and he was also king of Israel for some 40 years. When Solomon became king, God offered to give him one request. Maybe some of you remember that story. Can you imagine God coming to you and willing to grant you one request? So he's about to be king. And many of us know that the request that he asked for was not riches, not glory, not fame. He asked for wisdom. Literally what he asked for is he said, grant to me an undivided heart. And that's been translated into wisdom. But it is an undivided heart. Wisdom is a heart that is undivided, that has one loyalty, and that is to Lord God Almighty, that pursues only one, that is the Lord God Almighty, who doesn't get distracted and would never pursue two common gods, but only one God, the Lord God Almighty. Wisdom comes when we have an undivided heart, when we pursue him, with all of our heart and soul and might and strength. That's wisdom. That's how wisdom comes. Those who have been installed today as elder and deacon, those who continue on as elders and deacons, our prayer for you is that you have an undivided heart a heart with one aim and one goal. We'll talk more about Solomon in future Sundays. This passage, the first 10 verses of chapter 1, gets into the heart of wisdom where he says, the journey into wisdom begins here. It begins with the fear of the Lord. That's where we start, to trust in God and to believe that God has plans and purposes. And though we can't see it all at one time, we trust that it's there. And in time, he reveals more and more of it. During this pandemic, many people have turned to puzzles to pass time. Puzzles are one of the things that went off the market very early because everyone was ordering puzzles and you couldn't get them. Luckily, Renee and I have a stockpile of about 15 or 20 of them that kept us busy. 
what would be awful is if people took boxes of puzzles and dumped them all out together. <laughs> You'd say, I don't even know what the right puzzle piece is. I don't even know if this piece goes to this puzzle, to this thing that I'm shooting for. God says, my, my plan is not like that. There might be different puzzle pieces, but they're of the same puzzle. They're of the same, same canvas. They come together. And as we trust and walk and grow, that shaded idea of what we think that picture will be becomes clearer and clearer. Because he has a canvas that he has painted. And he wants us to grow into that canvas. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Many of us have heard different definitions. I'm just trying to be a little bit creative and maybe give you a definition you haven't heard before. How about this? The fear of the Lord is to be captivated by him. The fear of the Lord is to be captivated by him. We often think of the fear of the Lord to be in awe of him, to be overwhelmed by him, and that is true. To be in awe of his power and his goodness. And we know that when people in the Bible first encounter a, a glimpse of God and who he is, they fall down on their face because it's just so overwhelming. And in time, that sense of overwhelming is replaced with this sense of worship, to be captivated by him. I believe one of the great ways in which we grow in our understanding of God is in worship, is in gathering together. In worship, we see God's greatness and his grace coming together. In worship, we see God's power and his mercy blending together. In worship, we see God's majesty and his tenderness coming together. You want to gain a clearer picture of God to be captivated by him? A vital place is in worship when those two come together. In the house that I grew up in, we had a bit of a plumbing problem. We don't have it in our house now, but in the house that I grew up in, uh, you know, you have the tap for cold water and you have the tap for hot water. And when you're washing dishes, you know, you try to get that, that mixture right so it's warm and hot but not too hot and scalding. So you use the, the, the cold and the hot together. And... Uh, my brother found out that if you flush the toilet when someone is running the hot and the cold, it takes the cold water away for just a few seconds, and you get scalding hot water to come out of the faucet. My brother found this out. And you know when he wanted to try it out? When I was in the shower. So there... You know, you're trying to get just the right shower temperature. You know, you're working with the cold, you're working with the hot, and my brother goes into the other bathroom and he flushes the toilet. And I'll say, hey, who's flushing the toilet? I'm trying to take a shower in here. Because you get just the hot. But when you get the hot and the cold together, and you get it just right, ah, oh, isn't that great? And when you get the majesty and the mercy coming together, ah, oh, that's just right. And the wonderful place where that happens is in worship. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Is to be captivated by him so that we know him and we operate our lives based on that knowledge. It's not simply knowing him and putting it in storage in the cloud, but putting it into practice here on earth. The fear of the Lord means that he can be trusted. 
He can be trusted in this world, and he can be trusted with our lives. So what happens when we decide to choose intentionally against his instructions? When he gives us his wisdom, when he gives us his instructions, and we decide to choose against it. Because there will be other people, other forces that will entice us to choose other ways, to walk in their way. It will be what the proverb says, the lure to do it, whatever it is. It's strong for a lot of people to be enticed by what others say. And nowadays, that enticing comes with the words, click here, punch here. The Proverbs has something to say about people who are being enticed by others. It says they lie in wait for their own blood. They set ambush for their own life. They eat the fruit of their way. They have the fill of their own devices. What it's saying is, by choosing poorly, they are harming themselves. You see, in Proverbs, when you sin, you're not only sinning against God, you're not only sinning against others, you are sinning against yourself, and so you are harming yourself. And that's not God's plan. The instruction in Proverbs is given, as it says in chapter 1, to provide a graceful garland, or literally a crown on our heads. Follow God's word, and God places a garland, a crown on our heads. Or it says a pendant, a necklace around your neck. And crowns and necklaces are beautiful. Crowns and necklaces were also worn by queens and kings, by princesses and princes. When we follow the instructions in Proverbs, God says, I am going to bless your life and give your life goodness and give your life health. And when circumstances come that send other people reeling, God's wisdom holds us strong because he has blessed us with a crown and a garland. The wisdom found in the book of Proverbs helps us deal with fear because if we choose God and to be captivated by him, it says we will dwell securely. It says literally, be at ease without dread of disaster. When we pursue wisdom, does that mean that we will not face disaster? No, not at all. But it will enable us to live securely in God and trust him in the face of disaster, knowing that he is sovereign, that he has painted this beautiful canvas and even when disasters come, he can even use that disaster in some miraculous way to advance his own purposes. So great is our God. Proverbs says, fear the Lord, and you don't need to fear anything else. And this kind of wisdom is available to everyone. It's unrelated to one's IQ unrelated to a GPA. There are millions of brilliant women and men in this world who despise wisdom. But to all, he says, fear the Lord. Be captivated by him. Learn from him. And he brings a garland and a necklace to bless us with. And then lastly, this morning, in these early chapters of Proverbs that we're going to look at these next Sunday mornings, next Sunday, it'll be chapter 3, 
of Proverbs. The writer Solomon likens wisdom to a person as if wisdom is personified. So that wisdom calling out is like a person who is calling out wisdom, calling out for followers to come after and calling for people to listen to what they say. But the one who has been personified in wisdom in the book of Proverbs not only speaks wisdom, they are the creator of wisdom. They are the ones who created wisdom in the first place. And because we know that wisdom comes from God, the person who has been personified as God's wisdom is Jesus. He not only lived a life of wisdom, but being God, he is the creator of wisdom as well. Jesus is wisdom with skin on and shows us how to completely live well. We believe that all of the Bible, Old and New Testament, points to Jesus. And Proverbs is no different. As we read in these early chapters of wisdom personified, it is Jesus speaking out to us. So we would do well to place our lives in his hands, to have him lead us and guide us, to not only be the great forgiver, the one who cleans up our life with power and grace, but the one who gives us direction, points us in God's way. Jesus is there not to burden us with the do's and the don'ts, but to point us to life and life well lived. All that we will come across in the book of Proverbs leads us to Jesus, the one that we are to have an undivided heart for. So let wisdom lead us there. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Father God, how we bless you for your wisdom. We know that it is a part of who you are, like righteousness, like goodness. We bless you, Father God, for longing to give to us, your children, your wisdom, your guidance. We thank you that Jesus has come to give us abundant life, life in the full. Help us, Father God, to choose wisely, to see the big picture of your canvas, and to choose in ways that help us to live so that you are glorified in our lives and our neighbors receive good. Father God, we lift up our country to you. We pray for our leaders, that you will lead and guide them, that they will seek from wisdom that comes from you and you alone. Father, we pray for the needs of our faith community. We lift up Gail and we pray that you will grant her strength and care. For Dan DeVries and for Dot in their recovery from surgery, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to grant them strength. We lift up Rosemary to you. We pray, Lord, that you will grant her healing as she recovers from her broken leg. We bless you for her spirit of graciousness and goodness. Even in pain and difficulty, we pray, Lord, that you will bless her with healing and comfort. We lift up Jane and Gil and Joe and Pam and David. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them with, with an abundance of grace and comfort and care. We bless you that Jane is able to join us in worship today. We pray especially that you will be upon her as one of her sisters passed away this week. Surround her and their family with comfort and care. Father, we bless you for Danielle, Sue's granddaughter, who was married this weekend. And we pray, Lord, that as she and her husband uh, pursue you, that you will lead them in all wisdom and their new life together. 
we bless you for newborn babies that you have brought into our fellowship. And we pray, Lord, that you will help them to grow, to be faithful and healthy and strong. And for those carrying unborn life, grant them and their children safety, security, and health. We pray for our young people that you will protect their hearts and minds. Protect all those who are involved with their education. We pray for teachers and administrators that they will give, get rest and refreshment and restoration during these summer months. Prepare them for their time of teaching ahead. We pray, Lord, for Ralph, that you will give him strength and healing, and we have heard that he's was admitted into ER today, and we pray, Lord, that you will provide for him and bring to him uh, strength and courage. We bless you for our upcoming opportunity to minister to our families here at Discovery and our families in our community with Discovery Days. We pray, Lord, that you will give to us the opportunity to share ourselves, to share the crafts that you've given to us to share joy and happiness and games to joy to enjoy the gifts that you've given to us we pray lord that you will bless our elders and deacons and ask that you will guide them and give to them an undivided heart we bless you on these on this day for dads for those who have served as father figures for those who have mentored us. We pray, Lord, for dads that you would give to them a double blessing today. You will bless their time with family and friends. We lift up our neighbors to you, and we pray that you will use us to shine your grace and love. We pray for our neighbors on Willard, that you would give to them an extra blessing this week and that they would, might know that life's blessings come from you. We lift up our missionary partner, AJS, as they serve and pursue justice, not only in Honduras, but in other regions, other areas as well. Protect their leaders from harm and danger. Guide their leaders as they plan and program. Continue to use them to be a force of good as they serve justly in this world. We thank you for your grace. Bolster us in our resolve to live lives of wisdom so that you are honored. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son who makes all this possible. And we pray in Jesus' name, and everyone agreed and said, Amen. Part of what's I involved in living wisely is just the basic recognition that the world we live in um, is a world that was made by God um, and that he is our father uh, and he's made a good world for us to live in. So let's um, stand together and sing, This Is My Father's World.
my father's word. Oh, let me never forget. And though the wrong seems awesome strong, God is the Before we close, uh, we have a couple of announcements. Um, so as Pastor Paul already mentioned, um, we have a couple of cool uh, events coming up next month, um, July 19th through 21st. We have Discovery Days. Um, and so if you haven't gotten one of those uh, doorknob hanger things, um, or a bunch of them, then you can feel free to grab some of those and um, hang them on your neighbor's uh, doorpost. And uh, just a good way to get uh, some more members of the community to be a part of those things. So there's um, a craft night, a game night, there's a slip and slide with a cookout. So these are all uh, really fun opportunities for us to um, be hospitable to not only each other, but also our neighborhood. And so would invite you to, to do that and also to invite others to come. Um, we have a back to school bonanza that's going to be coming uh, August 21st. Um, so mark that on your calendars. It's going to be from 4 to 6. Um, so that's coming in August. And then um, also we're going to start prayer walks soon this week, um, June 24th. And we're going to be starting 7 p.m. under this tent, um, meeting together, praying together, and then getting ready to go walk in our neighborhood. Um, and so those will be going, uh, I believe it's uh, the second and fourth uh, weeks. Um, so even though in the, bol in the um, worship folder it might say uh, every other, it's the every second and fourth week. So... Um, just be on the lookout for that. And if you have any more questions, you can ask Pastor Mary. Um, she'd love to talk to you about that, I'm sure. Um, and then also, speaking of uh, Pastor Mary, there's some pre-worship prayer opportunities. Um, if on Sundays, if you want to um, pray with her or with other prayer servants, um, you can do that. You just um, look at uh, the Zoom links that are in the emails that we send out, um, or you can come in person and you can meet um, in the basement um, from about 9.15 to 9.30. Um, and then also, uh, if you have items for the prayer, the uh, hygiene pantry, um, we invite you to do that, um, to bring those items. And if you have questions about what's allowed or what's not um, not really wor what we're looking for, um, there's more details in uh, the bulletin there. And also you can ask, I'm sure Sarah would know, um, or Pastor Paul or um, one of the deacons too. Um, so finally, uh, if you have prayer requests, we invite you to um, send those in either via, via email or um, you can talk to one of our prayer servants here um, or there's a digital prayer pad on the website. So we just want to continue to grow as um, fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. And one of the ways that we do that is we pray for one another. Um, that's one just really practical way to love our neighbor. Um, so let's continue to do that and bring those to uh, each other. And I'm going to invite Pastor Paul to come up. So I have uh, one last announcement. You might not have had time to read it in your worship bulletin, but it is in there. And that is uh, over the past couple months, we have had a search for a new part-time youth director. It began with a recruitment team that, were, that was gathering perspectives and people possibilities. We had an interview team that then took those that were recommended and narrowed it down. And then we had the elders who were involved in this process. And it was a process of discernment and prayer. And uh, it took uh, a couple of months to be able to do that. And we are at a place where, as elders, we have offered that part-time position to our own Evan to lead and to guide in that role. 
and and he has accepted. So uh, he got the letter on Tuesday, Wednesday, to, yeah, and, and he sent me an email last night. So uh, his official capacity begins July 1. Uh, so, hey, we need to be uh, prayerfully lifting him up, supporting him. Uh, he doesn't officially start that second part-time job until July 1, but uh, he's going to be hitting the ground running. And uh, we just bless God that he has led us to Evan the very first place and that uh, now he's uh, growing and expanding in his love of discipleship to be able to explore that love and that training and discipleship with our young people. And we look forward to what God has in store. Now, people of God, receive God's parting blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance upon you and give to you his peace. All God's people said, amen. Go in peace. Thank you.